Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video we're going to be talking about the platelet release reaction which is one of the reactions which occurs in the process of the formation of a blood clot. So um, I've included an image here showing you the difference between activated platelets and normal non-activated platelets. But let's, um, let's discuss it in a bit more detail. In the last video we talked about how platelets would uh, adhere onto the subendothelium when we have um, the endothelial injury of a blood vessel. So we understand that following this endothelial injury of a blood vessel, it exposes the subendothelium. Now, the subendothelium consists of these collagen fibers, and then we have adhesion of the platelets onto these collagen fibers of the subendothelium via something which is known as von Willebrand's factor. So that's what helps the platelets bind onto the collagen fibers of the subendothelium. Now, in normal cases, and when I'm talking about normal cases, I mean in the cases of non-activated platelets, which you can see here, they have a open canalicular system, which basically means they have a open sort of canal within the uh, cell itself. And within the actual cell, you will find organelles like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, and granules and these are spread out throughout the cytoplasm. But when we have adhesion of these normal non-activated platelets to the subendothelium, they then become activated. So they dilate this canalicular system and all of the organelles will spread to the center of the cell and they form these little spikes, which you can see here on these activated platelets here. These are known as pseudopods. So these are what form and then what happens here is the platelet release reaction, which we're just going to talk about now. So activated platelets undergo a release reaction, and this is where the platelet granules secrete their contents outside the cell. Remember, we said the non normal non-activated platelets have organelles such as mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, and they have granules, and these granules contain substances. Now, when they're activated, they're going to release these um, substances inside these granules. Platelets have two types of granules. They have alpha granules and they have dense granules. Alpha granules contain fibrinogen, fibronectin, platelet-derived growth factor, platelet factor 4 and cationic proteins. Dense granules contain ADP, adenosine diphosphate, ionic calcium, serotonin, histamine and epinephrine. Now, release of ADP which is a potent platelet aggregating agent, so it causes the platelets to stick together. It causes aggregation of more platelets to take place, and this is known as secondary aggregation, because remember, we've had the initial um, number of platelets that have binded on, so bound onto the uh, subendothelium via von Willebrand's factor, and then we have secondary aggregation where another layer joins onto those ones which are already bound on. And this results in the formation of a temporary hemostatic plug. Now, I'm gonna say that it's temporary because later on we have formation of fibrin over, over this sort of plug and then it becomes a more stable um, hemostatic plug. So a stable hemostatic plug is formed with the action of fibrin, thrombin, and thromboxane A2. Okay, so that's everything for this video today. Thank you very much for watching.